Nissan Juke's going to be an interesting car for me to review because I don't know if you've noticed or actually had a look at any other reviews of this car online. It's not the most highly regarded car on the internet. I just kind of wanted to know, is it true or is it just one of those cars that people like to get on the bandwagon of, uh, of, of hating the car? So the Nissan Duke came out way back in 2010. It's a compact crossover car and it's the very first of the really small cars that are basically jacked up on stilts. You're obviously higher up than your average car, which gives you a sort of commanding view of the road. It's got very light steering, so it, it's, it feels like it's very easy to manoeuvre around town and stuff. It does feel like a little city car in that regard. The clutch is actually quite stiff, which is uh, unexpected for a city car. It's not very long, so it, it's only slightly longer than a Nissan Micra. So it, although it looks like a big car, it isn't. The bonnet you can see in front of you and you can see the, uh, the lights which are like designed by Nissan to give you this sort of position indicator of where the front of the car is and it does work. And at night time you can even see the indicator working and stuff so they look pretty cool. You've got huge wing mirrors. In that you can see the, the sort of bizarre shape of the car. The, the rear arches which protrude from the, the back of the car and, and give it that sort of like haunched look. The, the Duke is a strange looking car and I actually don't mind how it looks. I think it's quite an interesting design and at least they tried to do something with it but I can certainly understand why some people think it's uh, strange looking. The side of the car with the glass that sort of pinches back and gets smaller that's supposed to look like a, a motorcycle helmet visor trying to make it a bit like a coupe style design. You've got the, the rear door handles are hidden in the back plastic part at the top of the door. I thought that was a recent trend but uh, Nissan have been doing it since the 80s with their Pathfinder. I like this general layout of, uh, of everything in front of me. I like it. You've got these two big obvious dials for the revs and speed. You've got this little screen in the middle which puts everything condensed into this one little screen. So you've got all your information which you can switch between on the steering wheel, MPG and miles remaining. Nice steering wheel in front of you. It's got all of uh, the controls you need on it including radio and phone and your cruise control as well, which I always like cruise control on the steering wheel because it's easy to just flick on and off. This centre console here surrounding the gear stick is supposed to be like a fuel tank on a motorcycle. And then you've got these weird like ring pull type door handles on the doors. True to form of the, the crossover class, this car is front wheel drive. Now you can get it as all wheel drive, but so few are available with that system. In terms of its off-roading ability, of course it doesn't have any, but what it does have is some ground clearance, which means that when you're coming up to potholes and curbs and things that you would otherwise uh, be fairly fearful of, in your regular hatchback you can just kind of go over it in this got quite a good view out the back window uh, there is like a sort of blind spot and the rear three-quarter c pillar of the car it's quite fat the ride comfort is the first thing that i noticed that i'm not so impressed with and it's because it feels quite firm and, and uncomfortable really in some situations where you're hitting big potholes or bumpy bits of road and you'd think with it being well, there we go, raised up off the ground and with lots of suspension it would be more comfortable but I think that's because Nissan wanted to build a crossover car that was had a high centre of gravity but they still wanted to make it handle all right as well. There were a few different engines available. This one's got the 1.5 diesel which is a good all-rounder. If you want a diesel it's uh, it's got enough performance. Over 150 miles in this car I got uh, 65 mpg which is really impressive. It's 20 pounds a year to tax if you get a car that's pre-2017 in the UK. But of course there were also petrols available initially a 1.6 litre and a 1.6 litre turbo which was actually quite quick later on and, and became quite a popular engine was the 1.2 litre turbo petrol as well. With this being the Tecna model it's kind of a quite a high spec one but the Duke did come with all sorts of interesting kit on it. This one's got four cameras, one at the front, one at the back, one in each wing mirror. It's got lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring and it's got keyless entry and most systems you have the key in your pocket and you get in the car and this one you have the key in your pocket but you have to press a button on the door to open the door and I, I quite like that because you can use the button to lock it as well and it means that you know that the car's locked and you don't have to like walk away wondering if it's locked itself or not. In all but the lowest spec Duke you'll get this thing called the Icon climate control system. Now it's in climate all the buttons are for the climate control but then when you switch it into drive mode all the buttons change and you've got like uh, these different drive modes like normal, eco and sport. Nissan GTR style stuff like uh, being able to see the g-force and the torque of the car which is just i mean it's pointless it's kind of a quirky little feature there's no real way of me looking down at that while i'm driving around these corners so because of that firm suspension it, it does feel quite uh, quite good to drive actually it's not as 
for one of these sorts of cars, it, it doesn't handle too badly. There isn't much body roll like you'd expect there to be on a, on a raised up car. I'm going to put it into sport and uh, see how the car behaves. Oh, hello. Pretty sure that steering feels heavier, actually. I'm just going to change it back to normal. Yeah, that's quite light. And then sport mode. I really wasn't expecting that. I thought it would just be a throttle thing, like makes the throttle more responsive or, or whatever. <laughs> Bloody hell. For getting comfortable in this car, you can adjust the steering wheel up and down, but you can't adjust it outwards. There's no adjustment for like lumbar support or anything, so your back is just gonna be in whatever position your back's in, which over distance, I find that the, the seats, especially these leather ones, they're quite hard and, and uncomfortable. Practicality's up front in this car. That bottom bottle, it sort of fits in the cup holders, but it's, it doesn't fully go down to the bottom. And again, for the, the side door pockets, it kind of half wedges into it. You've got this like armrest here, which gets in the way of the handbrake when it's down, which is kind of annoying. And then inside it, it's got um, a little cubby hole glove box which is on the smallish side. A little tray here in the centre console. And then next to it, you've got aux in and USB. There's a mirror in the sun visor, but there's no light around it. So it's not going to illuminate your face at night when you're uh, doing your makeup. It's now time to ask backseat JJ what he thinks of the back seats of the Nissan Duke. Yeah, no no problem, mate. As you can see, it's, it's just about fitting my knees are just there my head's just touching the roof so it is only a small car though remember yeah that's a, that's a good point actually it is a little bit sort of dingy i mean these are this there's like tinted windows here and they're, and they're quite narrow so it's sort of a little bit claustrophobic also have you told them about the safety features of the nissan juke it's a five star euro end cap car so it's a pretty safe car Cheers for that, mate. Uh, if you get a post 20 15 facelift duke then the boot is actually bigger and you get space underneath where you can you can basically lower the floor and uh, fit more stuff in or you can keep the floor where it is and have a flat load lip so you can slide things in easier the seats fold 60 40 and when they fold they fold totally flat which is really good not all cars will do that so it's reasonably practical back here but especially if you get the facelift model you don't just get a reverse camera on this car you get reverse camera a camera on the front and then two in each one in each wing mirror so you get four cameras and then nissan stitch it all together into this like 360 sort of surround view of the uh, of the car so when you are in reverse it'll automatically put it on if you press this camera button here it'll also bring it on it kind of looks like you've got a drone flying above the car that can see you know, everything around the car it's really quite a, a cool bit of tech in the 80s and 90s nissan was a byword for reliability. It's not really the case anymore. These are not unreliable, but there are some issues. I mean, this one's got two of the quite common problems that the Duke can have. The infotainment system, the radio, the volume fades out to nothing now and again. Apparently a software update might sort that out. Aircon condenser is down at the bottom in front of the radiator. There's a great big hole in front of the car to let air in, and it's known as the wine rack because of the shape of the bumper stone on it, it'll chip the condenser and then all of your aircon refrigerant will just come out and then your aircon doesn't work anymore. Sadly for this diesel engine it's not known as the most reliable. It was ranked 30 out of 35th for this kind of car in terms of diesel reliability with what car. The petrols fared a bit better than now they're 9th out of 35 so that's pretty good. Is that an F355? <laughs> wow generally speaking I think that the the boys up in Sunderland who built this car, they didn't do a bad job. This is, of course, a UK-built car. The problem is, because the ride's quite firm, I can hear a bit of like rattling and stuff coming from the back. Is the Nissan Duke as bad as some people make out? And uh, I'm going to just tell you now, no, it, it isn't. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not a bad car. The only real things that I'm not a big fan of are the ride comfort and these seats, these leather seats in this uh, Tecna version at least, are quite firm. And the design of the whole car, I think I quite like it. You know, it's different at least. I mean, okay, you see them everywhere now, so it's not as uh, interesting as it might have once been. But what do you think about the Nissan Duke? Whether you've got one or you're thinking of getting one or you've just watched this video out of curiosity. Do you like the car? Um, do you like the style of it? A big thank you to Natalie for lending me the car. And uh, if you want to see a review of the Vauxhall Mocha, which was a direct competitor to this car, click up here. It's definitely worth looking into that car if you're, if you're interested in this one. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.